okay uh, now let's find competitive equilibrium in this economy okay okay uh, so uh, you know uh, to find competitive equilibrium you know it's just uh, again straightforward uh, again you can you can just rule out zero price uh, zero price for y you know because uh, if price of y is zero then uh, because the utility is strictly increasing in y you know so uh, so both the consumers will will uh, demand infinite amount of y okay so that can never be market clearing okay so uh, so uh, so because py is zero is ruled out uh, what we can do is we can take y as numerator okay and and set py equal to one okay. okay now all that we have to do is we just have to figure out px such that market for x clears because if market for x clears market for y will automatically clear okay uh, so what what we'll do is you know we can uh, we can just solve the utility maximization problem of consumer one uh, because uh, it's the same utility maximization problem for consumer two uh, you know we don't have to solve this twice uh, we can just solve this once and use it uh, to find the competitive equilibrium okay uh, so just maximize with respect to x1 y1 x1 plus 2 root y1 okay uh, subject to the constraint that p x x1 plus p y y1 is equal to m1 okay now i'm not replacing this by the value of the endowment yet uh, the reason is because for individual one the value of the endowment is different for individual two the value of the endowment is different so because i just want to solve this problem once i will just you know leave m1 like this right now and then later on you know i'll replace uh, m1 by the value of endowment of individual one and m2 by the value of the endowment of individual two. okay fine okay so let's solve this okay uh, so how do we oh by the way py is one so i can actually remove this yeah so now we can solve this problem okay uh, so of course there are many ways in which you can solve this problem uh, you can actually plot it and do it uh, uh, so uh, so what what i'll do is i'll just quickly do this uh, uh, by converting into a one variable optimization problem okay uh, so how do we convert this problem into a one variable optimization problem you know what we can do is we can just replace this uh, you know x1 by m1 minus y1 okay upon px okay because uh, because x1 is m1 minus y1 upon px of course the non negativity constraints are also there okay which i haven't mentioned but you know of course you know this is standard okay so what i'll do is this uh, uh you know let me convert this as i've just told you into uh, one variable optimization problem and uh, you know let me just solve this for y first okay uh, so let's just do that for y okay uh, so maximize with respect to y1 0 to um, 0 so y1 can take values because py is 1 y1 can take values between 0 and m1 okay and let me just replace this x1 by m1 minus y1 okay upon px okay plus 2 root y1 is that okay can i write like this okay now all that we have to do is take the derivative and figure out what's going on with uh, with this function okay as y1 increases what happens to this function okay uh, so let's take the derivative and let's see what are we going to get if you want to take the derivative we are going to get minus 1 by px okay plus root y1 is that okay yes or no sorry plus one by root y1 yes 
if you want to take the derivative of this objective function with respect to y1 do you agree we are going to get this yes now do you agree when y is close to zero then this term is bigger than this term yes okay uh, so that tells you that you know uh, you would want to increase y because uh, you know when you are close to zero you would want to increase y because uh, increasing y uh, increases your satisfaction level okay because because the derivative is positive when y is close to zero okay now as long as it stays positive you would like to keep increasing y yes or no as long as it stays positive you would like to keep increasing y yes or no because you know your this derivative is positive that means you know you would like to keep increasing because if you if you keep increasing it you know because the derivative is positive so that tells you that the value of this function will keep on going up yes okay uh, so what that means is uh, you know what that means is uh, that you know you will stop e you know at at either m1 you know because what you know there's a possibility that m1 might come before this point where this becomes zero yes or no okay uh, so so basically uh, you know y1d is a function of px and m1 okay and you will stop at m1 okay so y1 will be m1 if at m1 this derivative is positive yes or no because you keep increasing you know and uh, keep increasing y1 you cannot go beyond m1 now the derivative at m1 is still positive but you cannot go beyond m1 so you stop at m1 okay uh, which tells you what you know so uh, which tells you that this is positive okay uh, so if you re if you want to rewrite this condition you can also write this as m1 is less than px squared is that okay okay now what happens if m1 is beyond this you know so what happens if at m1 this is negative so if m at m1 this is negative that would mean that somewhere between 0 and m1 this value becomes zero okay and that's where the optimal is okay uh, so all that you have to do is just have to figure that out so obviously if you want to set it equal to zero you're going to get px squared okay so if you want to write it in a compact way you can also write it like this min of m1 comma px squared okay that's the demand for y by individual one okay now what we can do is we can similarly find the demand for y by individual two uh, because you know it's the same utility function uh, we just have to replace this subscript by two you know to uh, to uh, figure out the demand for y by individual two uh, and we are going to get y2 d px m2 is equal to m2 px square and this is if m2 is less than px square okay and this is if m2 is greater than or equal to px square is that fine okay now you know i mean we can also take market for y i mean so there are two ways you can either find the demand for x now uh, so how do you find the demand for x you just have to take this uh subtract this from m1 and divide it by px 
that's just going to give you demand for x so that's one way to do it otherwise you can just take market for y because if one market clear the other market will automatically clear okay uh, provided both prices are positive okay so in this case both prices will be positive so you can take either of the markets okay and uh, and uh, uh, you know uh, just take any one of them okay uh, market for x or market for y uh, and then just just uh, set the demand equal to supply and then solve for the price okay so that that's all that you need to do now okay uh, so what i'm going to do is the first step the first thing that i'll do is i'll replace this m1 by the value of the endowment okay uh, so uh, so what is the value of the endowment of individual one okay so recall that uh, so the total endowment of individual one is four zero and individual two is zero four. Okay, so individual one's endowment is uh, four zero. Okay, and individual two's endowment is zero four. Okay, so let's let's just rewrite the demands just in terms of Px by replacing M1 by the value of the endowment. So what are we going to get as Y1D? Okay, so if we just replace M1 by uh, so m1 is going to be replaced by what 4px right yes or no uh, so uh, so it's just, just going to be 4px if 4px is less than px squared which is same as saying that 4 is less than px right okay and uh, it's going to be px squared if m1 m1 is 4px so 4px is greater than px squared uh, which will give you what uh, 4 is greater than or equal to px squared sorry 4 is greater than or equal to px is that fine okay uh, similarly you can write the demand uh, for y by individual 2 and you'll get what uh, well uh, m2 is what m2 is 4 right m2 is 4 so this is if 4 is less than px squared okay and it's px squared if 4 is uh, greater than or equal to px squared okay uh, so notice that this condition you know i can just uh, simplify this and write two over here is that okay okay so can we have a price of x greater than two in competitive equilibrium okay uh, so notice that you know uh, if px is greater than two the demand for y by individual 2 is 4 units okay and the demand for y by individual 1 is definitely positive you know i mean if if px is greater than 4 then it's going to be 4 px if px is less than or equal to 4 then also it's px squared now no matter what happens you know it's 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 a strictly positive number so if px is greater than 2 then the total demand for y will be definitely greater than 4 because it is 4 plus some positive number okay and and we know that the supply of y is exactly 4 units so clearly you know uh, px greater than 2 cannot be a competitive equilibrium price so this case is ruled out now consider the case when px is less than or equal to 2 then y2d is px square right the demand for x by individual sorry demand for y by individual 2 is px square yes and demand for y by individual 1 is also px square yes because because px has to be less than 2 if px is less than 2 then px is definitely less than 4 right so uh, so the demand for y by individual one is px square the demand for y by individual two is also px square uh, so you just add these two demands and this should be equal to what the total supply of y right what is the total supply of y four units okay so what are we going to get px 
square is equal to 2, okay, which is going to give you uh, Px equal to square root of 2. Is this fine? Okay, so that's the competitive equilibrium price. Okay, and if you want to figure out the allocation, you know, that is also not difficult. Uh, you already know how to find Y1 and Y2 now because Y1 is PX square, Y2 is PX square. So that's just going to give you Y1 is 2, Y2 is 2. So that clearly tells you that it must be Pareto efficient because uh, because if Y1 equals Y2 equals 2, then, then the allocation is Pareto efficient. Okay, so that means, you know, so this is a competitive equilibrium price. Okay, now I'm writing the competitive equilibrium allocation. Okay, so competitive equilibrium allocation will be what? Uh, y1 is 2. Okay, and y2 is also 2. Okay, now we just have to figure out the corresponding value of x1 and x2. And that is something that you will get from the budget constraint. Okay, uh, so if you just look at the budget constraint of individual 1, uh, well, you can just look at this also actually. Uh, because this is exactly x1, right? It's it's m1 minus whatever y you demand, okay, as uh, divided by the price of x, okay. So what is the income of individual one? Income of individual one is four times square root of two. Yes. Okay. Uh, so you're gonna get what? Four square root of two. Okay. Minus y1. Y1 is two divided by the price of x which is square root of 2 okay and what is income of individual 2 income of individual 2 is 4 okay so you're going to get what 4 minus uh, minus y2 divided by square root of 2 which is 4 minus 2 by square root of 2 which is square root of 2 is that fine Okay, so this is the competitive equilibrium allocation. Have you understood this? Okay, and it's it's pretty efficient uh, because it satisfies y1 equal to y2 equal to 2. 